What a week for police across America. A manhunt after a deadly 10-second mass shooting at a concert in Florida. Plus, police taking fire from children. Tonight on Banfield, the officers from the smash hit docuseries Live PD weigh in on the week that was. And then later on, the lighter side of news, because after all, if we don't laugh, we'd probably cry. Tonight, a look back on the stories we can't believe actually made the news. It is Friday night, and that means we get a visit from two of the officers from the smash hit docuseries Live PD tonight. Both are from the Richland County Sheriff's Department in Columbia, South Carolina, and we've got some news. Check this out. In just the last two days, they both got promotions. So let me be the first to congratulate both of you and to introduce Master Deputy Addie Perez. And back with us, Garo Brown, but this time, Sergeant Garo Brown. Congratulations, both of you, and welcome. It's great news. You must be thrilled. Uh, thank, thank you so much, you. Ashley. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's always nice to be congratulated. Okay, so let's get right to the business of the week because it's been... You know, it's been that week again. Um, so there's a week-long manhunt in Florida, three gunmen on the loose all week after the Memorial Day weekend mass shooting in Miami. We all saw it on the news. 10 seconds, 100 rounds were fired, two men killed, 21 wounded, all of this outside a banquet hall that was hosting a rap concert. And during a police press conference, one of the victim's dads had a message for those on the run. Take a peek. Innocent people that have nothing to do with their beef, ruining families, harming mothers who are here today. You all killed my kid. You must burn. You gotta burn. You hear me? You kill my kid. Sergeant Brown, that it's just, it's heartbreaking. You know, you, you hear the, the victim's family members um, and you, your heart bleeds for them because they uh, are ultimately suffering the brunt of this. Um, but for police, how are things different when there's a manhunt? How is the staffing different? How, if you're in Florida, how does the situation change when you are in the middle of a manhunt? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know, Garrel Brown, so, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, Addie, Addie, you're up. So, well, you know, since your picture's I up, we'll go with you and then I'll ask Garrel Brown in a second. Go ahead, Addie. Um, you're talking about the manpower, the resources that you're using of trying to do a manhunt. These are trying to locate these su three suspects that are there. Um, and it's difficult because you're looking at a vehicle that was stolen um, from somebody else from about two weeks ago, it said. And then on top of that, they get into the vehicle and they dish it. Now, we don't have a face. You don't have visualization of that. And it all depends if they even have evidence from the vehicle to be able to locate these suspects. So it's it's heartbreaking and, and it's difficult. And especially we don't know who's, who it is. Um, so they're going to have to use all the things that they have available you know any cameras are in the area um anybody that may know it any you know bolos or anything they need to go out to see if anybody actually knows these suspects to fit, locate them and and if we don't have anything coming back to it it's, it's going to be a long long process so the, imagine the manpower they're using just to locate these three suspects to make, get justice for these people that got hurt so imagine that yeah so manpower uh, it's a good that's a good way of putting it. it's called police power really because these three people took 10 seconds count them on your clock right there this was carnage in seconds they are dangerous they knew what they were doing they had stolen that car they dumped it it was in a pond it was recovered but you know sergeant brown um boy that rolls off easily sergeant brown <laughs> so is this is this the time when all of a sudden everybody's really thankful there are police because generally speaking oh it's just heartbreaking to look at that video generally speaking you know, you guys have had it really rough. And then along comes really dangerous people like this, and you're the protectors again. You're looking for justice. You're trying to mm -hmm. find these guys. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Ashley, it's kind of like um, it's been for a long time, especially as far as I've been in police work. You know, uh, we know that we're going to face scrutiny at times. Um, we have some officers out there that um, choose not to do the right thing, and that happens, and we all bear the brunt of that. You know, it's not this individual did something, it's always the police did something, which I guess includes the 800,000 officers that are out there. So we're, we're, we're prepared for that. Um, at the end of the day, we're still going to go out there and do what we're supposed to do. We're going to run towards the gunshots. Um, we're going to do what we can to protect the public. It's just what we've 
been doing, is what we're going to continue to do. Um, and that is what's going to keep the confidence in the police um, as far as the public is concerned at the fact that they know when things get dangerous, the gunshots ring out, we're going we're gonna to run to them and we're going to do what we can to protect the public. Okay, well, you kind of teed up the next story, um, literally running into gunfire. So this mm -hmm. next story, guys, comes from uh, Florida again, but this time Volusia County. I couldn't believe this when it hit the news. It's a real nightmare situation for any police officer. I don't think I have to tell you guys. But the deputies there were involved in a shootout at this house with a 12-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl. Yeah. Um, the two of them had run away from a local foster home. They broke into that nearby house. Those homeowners didn't know anything about it. Um, they were not home at the time. But in their home, they had a handgun. They had a shotgun. They had an AK-47 and 200 rounds of ammunition. And so the kids got their hands on all of that. And take a look at what uh, Sheriff Mike Chitwood had to say on Fox 35 Orlando. As deputies are surrounding the home and try to establish a rapport, they are met with gunfire. And they're not met with gunfire once. They're not met with gunfire twice. They're met with gunfire multiple times. At 828, one of my sergeants, who was the first to arrive, Sergeant Donnie Maxwell, takes fire multiple times, never returns fire. So, guys, I don't even know where to begin. Um, Addie Perez, you know, I heard on a, on a body cam one of the officers who was being fired on from an AK because there were dozens and dozens of rounds that those kids fired at the officers. Uh, he, he whispered, please, please don't make me do this. And I wondered if that just spoke to you as a police officer, um, what that guy must have been going through. I mean... It Honestly, when I when I saw this video and I and I read this, it, it, what comes to me is why were these weapons unsecured? Um, and every officers, they never want to fire on a child. I mean, it's like our worst nightmare, honestly. And but we're gonna have to do what we have to do, depending on the circumstances of you know what they're engaging in. And it, and it was difficult, difficult situation, a difficult decision. Um, for these two teenagers or these young children actually to get their hands on these weapons that were unsecured in the home um, and then having the, the ability to go fire and just think it's a game. Um, it was so dangerous and it, it was just an unfortunate situation. I mean, um, shame on the homeowners, unfortunately, for having these weapons unsecured that they were so easy to get, uh, get in the hands of, of young children, first off. That's why we always stressed in having, um, you, you know, having these weapons secured and make sure nobody has the ability to get entrance and, and having access to these weapons only for yourself, for your home and your family. Um, and then at the same time, training and, and teaching children uh, about weapon discipline and, and how to you know, involve themselves in just making sure that they understand how dangerous a weapon can get um, and what harm it can really do. And I believe that 14-year-old finally realized and a 12-year-old finally realized that, oh, this is real. Um, you know, and it took her to be shot, unfortunately. Oof. And then it took 12-year-olds yeah. to finally give up, you know, and it's an unfortunate situation. And, and this is why it's very important to make sure we, we train our families, we train our children to realize that these are dangerous things. These are not games. And, and it's very important for families and, and adults who are having these weapons to secure them. I mean, this is what's going to so happen. It the only thing is, simple. Addie, I will say, it's a bit weird because it's still a developing story and the jury's a little bit out on those weapons. I heard just earlier that um, the AK-47 was actually disassembled. So somehow a 12 and a 14 year old kid are able to assemble an AK, load the ammo. I think the homeowners at some point had said they were secured and of course the home was locked and they weren't there. These kids had burst, they'd broken windows and gotten into this home. This was an unrelated home to their lives. They were supposed to be staying in a foster situation somewhere else. So there's just a lot of breakdown um, in the system there. But Sergeant Brown, the, the whole idea that I can't believe we're talking about a 12-year-old. I mean, we can't even say teenagers here. This is a child, a 12-year-old child and a 14-year-old. And what Addie said is right. The 14-year-old girl was shot. The 12-year-old boy was not shot. Um, but I, I don't even know what the question is. It's a sign of the times. I mean, we're talking about kids in shootouts against a phalanx of officers. This must be really heartbreaking for you as an officer. Well, it definitely is. And, and, and I got to piggyback off what Addie said, you know, when you're talking about, you know, children this age, this young, they don't realize the ramifications of what they're actually doing and the fact that how easily they could have lost their lives. Um, you know, that one officer that we heard on, on the body cam, 
um, you know, saying he didn't want to do it. They himself and the other officers there, um, you know, they, they showed great restraint. You know, they were being fired upon multiple times by high power weapons, and they were, of course, well within their legal right to return fire, but he wanted to leave that as the last resort. Um, that, that's a bad situation. It could have turned out a lot worse. Um, so looking at it and, and how it ended up is probably the best scenario that we could ask for. Yeah, at least uh, no one lost their lives. Thank God uh, for that. Okay, I want to switch gears. I want to take everybody to Maryland. The chief judge in that state um, and the district courts has ordered that all district court employees stop wearing any clothing that dons the Blue Lives Matter flag. And the reason given that some court employees were seemingly wearing masks that, that sported uh, the Blue Lives Matter flag. And it was in response to a public defender's letter to the judge, which read in part, the flag has been adopted by the Blue Lives Matter movement, which launched in response to the Black Lives Matter movement and has been associated at times with white supremacist groups. To allow these masks to be worn by courtroom staff during the hearings and trials of our clients, a large swath of them black, denied them the appearance that their hearing is being conducted fairly and without bias. So, Addy, I'll get you to weigh in first, Master Deputy. Um, no uh, support for the police allowed to be shown in the in the courthouse. Is that does that sit right or wrong with you? Um, I think it does sit right with me. I, I think I'm okay with that because it's in the courtroom. It should be neutral um, to have a fair trial and, and feel comfortable in a, in a situation of having to present a court case. Uh, I can see it being in court and I actually agree with it. Um, outside, of course, you represent what you, you know what you want to represent. Um, but I do believe in the courthouse, it should have not. I kind of agree with it, honestly, to, to be honest with you. I really do. Yeah. I think it should be neutral and nothing should be represented. Um, you don't want to have a, def you know, a victim or, or, or suspect kind of alter their stories or, or their feelings or anything like that um, to present their case. So I actually do agree with it. And what do you think, Sergeant Brown? Uh, you know, um, Ashley, people take symbols that mean uh, one thing and turn it into something else. You know, and also different people can interpret different symbols and phrases and slogans, you know, at different things. Um, so again, I kind of agree with Addy. Um, keep it neutral. That way there's no type of, you know, um, intimidation that someone may feel or someone taking sides or the other. Um, I think you just stay neutral. I don't have a problem with it. Outside on your own time in the public, you can represent what you want to. So I've been in and out of a lot of courtrooms, and I'll tell you what, it's not the first time I've heard this, that judges will always, I mean, so often say, don't come in here wearing a button, uh, even if it's the button of your loved one, because that can influence juries. Don't come in here with a T-shirt emblazoning a slogan. Uh, it could influence the jury. I mean, courthouses are really pristine places, and judges are really pristine folk for the most part. So I, I think I get this one as well. It's just always heartening to hear, like, you know, don't support the police. And I'm sure that's hard for you guys to hear as well. But in this mm -hmm. circumstance, I totally hear what you're saying. Guys, uh, stand by for a second. When we come back, I know you guys have been hearing a lot about uh, slogan defund the police. And some people really support that. Other people don't like it. And there is one state that is now saying, hey, if you're a community in this state and you defund the police, you are about to regret that. I'm going to explain why in a moment. Back now with Live PD's Master Sergeant Addie Perez and Sergeant Garrow Brown. Okay, guys, uh, I'm going to take you uh, back to Texas because something really interesting happened there. That state officially has decided to ban police officers uh, working with shows like Live PD, your show. Uh, proponents of the law say it isn't right to show people being arrested during their lowest moments in their life while glorifying police uh, for someone else's entertainment. And then those on the uh, pro side of Live PD say, well, hold on, isn't it transparency? And isn't this what we're all asking for when it comes to police officers? I mean, body cams are the, the biggest thing going, right? So I wanted to see where you both weigh in. And, and Addie Perez, I'll start with you because I, I heard from Garrow Brown on this topic a little earlier in the week. And doesn't mean I'm not going to come to you next, Garrow Brown. But go ahead, Addie. What do you think about that? 
I mean, we want transparency, right? They want to know what we do. They want to know how things are done. They want to see what is going on in law enforcement, good or bad, mistakes and all. And Life Media has done that, you know, and, and it's the best way. And the people actually learned uh, so many things and we learn from each other and the, the public actually sees what's going on and how things are done. And it's a better understanding how policing works and it's the, it's the best route that's been. Now to ban it, it's kind of like to each his own, but at the end of the day, you want transparency, why not show it all, you know, unscripted and on. That's what we've been doing this whole time. Um, so I, to each his own if they want to ban it. I mean, we're ready for it to come back and show the world what we do and from mistakes and, and you know, and the good stuff and the bad stuff. And it's not picking at people at the lowest because it can be our lowest as well. Um, I'm a perfect example of that from an event that happened a long time ago with the homeless man. It was my lowest moment as well. Um, so, I, it, you know, it's, it's keep it going. You know, it's the same thing as everybody recording on their phones. Um, it's the same thing they're recording on Facebook Live, everything else. Um, this time, you're still getting it all just on television. So, Garrow Brown, um, when you were on earlier this week and we talked about it, um, your fellow officer, uh, Captain Danny Brown, had something to say about it as well because he said that after all this time being on Live PD, things have actually changed in the community in how the community reacts to him and that it's actually a really good thing. Let me, let me play it because he says it a lot better than I do. Take a look. For us, on our side of it, it actually made a better connection with the communities to where it put a name with that badge. You can't go anywhere without seeing James Craig Miles, Sheriff Lamb, Darrell Brown, Eddie Perez. They call us by our names now. They don't call us by deputies, by police officers. They call us by our name. And now they have to call you Sergeant Garo Brown. Um, he makes, <laughs> I'm just going to keep telling everybody, uh, he makes a really good point. If, um, if the goal in a lot of communities is to have police moving back into the communities to be better known among um, the communities there, isn't Live PD almost a way of, you know, you know, I guess digitally moving you guys into the community so that people know who you are? Oh, absolutely. Um, like Captain Brown was saying the other day, um, you know, I, I couldn't tell you how many times, you know, people that wouldn't normally come up to an officer or have any kind of interaction with an officer will come up to me and say, hey, you know, I was watching Live PD and um, I was just wondering, why did you do this? Or, hey, it, it cut off and it went to a commercial and I didn't get a chance to see what happened with, at the end. You know, it, it sparks conversation. It, it sparks healthy debate. It gets people interested in what's going on in their community, and it gets them a chance to see what's going on in their community. Um, people tune in because they have favorite departments, they have favorite officers, and the show is the number one show on television for a reason. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, it gets millions of viewers every weekend because people want to see um, the content. You know, um, yeah, so yeah. Like Can I ask you something honestly, Garo? Like, mm -hmm. we're just looking at pictures of you on on the. Mm -hmm. Does anybody actually walk up to you? Because I would think that they're scared of you because you're so big. <laughs> you know, they actually do. They touch him like he's real. <laughs> you see, I mean, you know, you're a nice guy. I know you, right? But when you see those pictures, yeah. like, dang. <laughs> uh, you know, me and Addie did an event uh, this weekend, and we couldn't get uh, five feet. You know, without groups coming up to us and talking, we wouldn't take pictures. It would take us, you know, 45 minutes to walk, you know, uh, 100 yards. You know, that's the kind I mean, we of... we got somebody um, down from Virginia. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, they well, you're known Virginia across the country, guys. There. I mean, mm -hmm. you may be from Richmond County and working in, you know, that district, but everybody, mm -hmm. you know, from California to Maine, they know, they know you. I, I do want to mm -hmm. talk to you about something else in Texas, though. Like, holy moly, uh, the governor there, Greg Abbott, has said... All right, we keep hearing about defund the police and we're taking action. And he has said, if you defund the police as a community in Texas, you're going to lose your tax revenue. So I want to read a little bit about what the, um, the actual bill says. It's House Bill 1900. It freezes property tax revenues for cities with populations over 250,000 that defund the police. It also allows the state of Texas to withhold sales taxes collected by a defunding city and give it instead to the Texas Department of Public Safety, ostensibly to pay for the cost of state resources used to protect residents of a defunded municipal 
municipality. So, Addy, I'm wondering if this is the sort of thing where other states are going to look at it and say, we might have to do the same thing, because if you defund in one community and then the state has to come in and make up the difference, uh, the state's going to take action and say, we're going to take the money from somewhere, probably you. Well, you know, they got to get, you know, where are you going to get the protection if you're not going to have officers there and defunding us? So what other resources are they going to use to ensure that the community is in good hands? I mean, I, I, it's, it's a difficult, difficult situation, especially trying to understand how, you know, they're going to start affecting your taxes. And I guess it's a wake up call to realize how much of that taxes goes into your community and goes into us and having to protect the community and how much work it really takes. I know. And maybe sometimes you have to shake it up a little bit to show exactly what's going on and how much you really need your community to be protected by the right people and, you know, having the right resources to ensure that we do that. So um, if they do it, I mean, uh, let's see what happens. I mean, see if it works. I'm not sure. <laughs> You know what, uh, Garrel Brown, the, the, the word defund is a pretty loaded term. For some people, it's, it means take away. And for other people, it means, no, reallocate and do something smarter. So if, you, if you're if you hamstrung by a governor who says no to the defunding, even if it means reallocate, make better, well, how is the movement supposed to actually ply its trade in, in teaching the, the officers that need the teaching not to do what they're doing if there's a problem out on the streets and if, if black men and women are dying at a, at a rate that they shouldn't, don't, don't we need to do something? Yeah, you know, Ashley, I think you, you hit it 100%. It, it's such a loaded term and it's such a vague term that I myself, when I hear it, even to this day, we've heard it thousands of times by now, I'm not sure what that actually means. Um, when you say defund it, you can take that as, which I do, um, you're gonna take you know, a funding away from the department. Um, to me, that's nothing more than a disservice to the community. Um, when someone calls 911, you know, because you're having an emergency, you want someone to respond. And if you take away funding with is less officers, less vehicles, less equipment, we're going to be less efficient at being able to do that for you. Um, so the people that that call for defunding the police, you're basically, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, kind of cutting your own knees out from you. Because when, you know, whether it's getting that cat out of the tree or someone's kicking in your back door, when, when you call the police, you need someone to respond. Um, or there's three murderers on the loose in a manhunt, right, in, in Florida. I got to cut it there, but man, oh, man, do I enjoy these Friday nights with you guys. Sergeant, mm -hmm. Sergeant Garrow Brown and Master <laughs> yes. Deputy Addy Perez, I want to congratulate you both again on well-deserved promotions and a lot of hard work out there and a lot of good work that you do, too. Thank you so much. And both of you stay safe out there, okay? I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you, Thank Ashley. You. Coming up, we're going to take a big old exhale and we're going to enjoy a laugh at the lighter side of this week's news because after all, it's Friday and you need a laugh. It is Friday night. Cheers. Um, and so that means we're taking a look at what most people don't even consider news because, frankly, uh, it's the lighter side of the news and it's the end of the week and we've kind of all had it with the real news, right? So let me introduce two of the best in the comedy biz, friend of the show, Ben Glebe, who is host of Idiot Test, the best name ever. It airs on the Game Show Network. And also with us for the first time is comedian and actor Judy Gold, who is also the author of Yes, I Can Say That. When they come for us comedians, we are all in trouble. When they come for... Comedians, we are all in trouble. Welcome uh, to Ben and welcome Judy. It's good to have you. Let's get right to it. Thank okay? you. By the way, first of all, what are you drinking, Ben? That looks weird. This is vodka inside a curious elixir, which is like cardamom and fennel. It's, me it's meant to be a sober cocktail that I'm breaking the rules on. Okay. And Judy, what do you have? You know, I'm much more of a man than Ben, and I have straight <laughs> vodka with a couple of olives. <laughs> Neat and chilled, baby. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, well, I want to say I'm the man about town here with a b bottle, of, a beer out of the bottle. It's really the only way I drink it. I never put it in a glass. But You're both since more I have to do than this, Congratulations. You're welcome. Uh, now it's officially on the internet, too. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we've all made a few mistakes in our lives, right? Guys, speaking of drinking, maybe a drunken stupor here and there, but there was a guy in Milwaukee who really took it to the ninth. Uh, he was looking for a place to rest his weary, drunken head, decided to break into what he thought was an empty Airbnb. 
I don't know why he thought it was an empty Airbnb, but he did. Problem was it wasn't empty. It was rented out by a bunch of cops. So here's how WDIV in Detroit covered the story. Take a look. <laughs> this silly guy found the one Airbnb in all of downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin, loaded with cops. He woke up in handcuffs. The cop Can you imagine the luck? Ben, I'll let you tee us up and take us out with this one. Look, I've heard of some bad Airbnb experiences, but this <laughs> is next level. All you want to do is get a nice night's rest in an Airbnb you didn't pay for and just disturb a nice family that's not related to law enforcement. And then this happens and your day is ruined. I hope this guy registers for Airbnb, leaves them a very bad review. There should be a warning. Police inside, don't break in here. And that's on them. That's on the company. But you know what, Judy? The weird thing is that these cops were just tourists. They were visitors. I think they were all from Montana. So now do you think, shouldn't they have just let this 19-year-old go? Or do you think, hell no, well, if you're I, a cop in Montana, you're a cop in Milwaukee. I Well, I heard they were there for some sort of training. So apparently they're used uh, whatever they learned. But are you sure this is the first time this guy woke up in handcuffs? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you make a very good point. And I, uh, I don't care Thank whether you. these cops were tourists or not. I think they probably saved us all from the Airbnb masked sleeper. All right, I'm going to move <laughs> on uh, to um, California. So another teenager made the news in California, only this one is like a serious hero, probably more manly than the rest of us. Her name is 17-year-old uh. Haley Marinico. Uh, she's in her, uh, her garden, sort of the house area. She hears the dogs barking like crazy. She goes to investigate, thinking there's an another dog out there. It was 100% not another dog. Take a look at what it actually was. Uh, first of all, I wow. cannot believe she just chose to, with her own bare hands, just shove a mama bear with two little cubs. Uh, secondly, she I can't bear believe hands? that makes it much easier. She had she had bare hands. Hands. <laughs> oh my, that makes it a million times easier. <laughs> good one. Man, you are really good at this job. Yeah, she had bare hands and she used those bare hands on the bear. But can you believe what you saw with your own eyes, Ben? It's pretty wild. That is a level of courage that I personally don't think I have. Hearing those dogs go nuts now, I had to mute myself. My dog just went nuts. And it could be because of that or there's a bear in my backyard. Oh my and if God. so, it was nice <laughs> having a dog for a while. I'm not going out there i just hope though for the sake of the family that she pushed the bear onto the property of there weren't small children playing out there because she would just sacrifice <laughs> her dog and oh sacrifice man her you just took her from hero to zero in like yeah. one sentence flat but do you love the fact she's got the dress on? literally she looks like judy garland running out there uh oh. tough as nails and saves the dogs as well doesn't just shove the bear like scrambles around picking up dogs and i mean then and she goes on the internet and says, yeah, apex predator. That was not, I mean, she even knows those words. Like this kid's sort of superhero. I, I, she is going to be a really good mother. I'm telling you right now, very protective, <laughs> but it's, but I think, don't you think the bear was a little like, all right, I'm going to deal with my kids. I, I, the bear didn't seem like it was that aggressive. Do you, am I wrong? What? Well, did okay. you see how fast those, po let's roll that video again. I keep looking at lumbering bears right now. When they want to strike, they are lickety split, lightning fast, and those claws have, you know, probably a couple yeah. inches on them. Watch what she does when she starts to claw. At first, the big black dog that comes running out, and then the little Yorkie-like thing. It, I think she actually captures the Yorkie with the uh, harness, but I think the dogs were okay, but watch how fast. Bam. Oh, and then, yeah, bam. that I mean, is pretty she's fast. so fast. It's just terrifying to think, yeah, you don't want to be, just, I still can't believe she did I love it. it. I love it. I love that dress. I know, right? She's it's got like Toto. It's
<laughs> it's like Look, the, 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 everything about it is is delightful, especially since, like I said, she's super badass when she said, "Yeah, I took on an apex predator, but you know, maybe I should have done that." Also, she only like sprained her finger and I think hurt her knee, but that was it. Ben, that she went up against a mother bear with two cubs, and that was it. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, certainly bears are intimidating a little bit less so when they're precariously balancing with their children. And she found <laughs> it a little bit in an easy to push situation, not trying to take anything away from her. No joke. I literally went head to head with a bear once in my life. I was camping with my family. I was like 11 years old and the last one out by the fire. And an eight foot black bear came out from behind the food locker 10 feet from me, looked at me and started walking right towards me. And I froze. They said, you're supposed to get up tall and make noise. I I said hard pass on that and I just ran <laughs> to my family's tent behind me my brother said well uh, I said bear he goes I'm not letting you in he kept the zipper down I had to rip it open dive in zip it and then the bear hit the side of our tent moments later so we saw what I would do in this situation again proving my lack of manliness I just dove away and this young lady went head to head with the bear so she's like DiCaprio in the rest <laughs> Into a tent to too. That's adorable. Yeah, oh. To be seventeen again, you know, like yeah, you're fearless at that age. You know, we we, we just yeah. did a bonfire, and, and there was a coyote the other night, and my 19 year old son is like, ugh, ugh, and I'm like, no, you're not going near the coyote. You're not going there. Uh, but <laughs> you know, for a teenager, well, the other they, thing you can do is you can you can pull an office and just sort of go right up against the bear and be like, beats bears. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> but okay, I'm going to move on to uh, after the break. I want you to think through Karens and all the things we've heard about Karens because there's a brand new story about Karen that I'm sure many Karens won't appreciate like they've appreciated any up till now. It's coming up next. Back now with Ben Glebe and Judy Gold and Beats, Spares, Beers, and Battlestar Galactica. But we are now moving on to Karen because the name Karen, guys, is plummeting in popularity, it seems. According to the Social Security Administration, uh, newborns named Karen fell 171 spots in 2020. <laughs> and it's not a joke. The, the parents of just 325 baby girls named them Karen in the year 2020. That was down from 439 baby Karens in 2019. But if you wow. have friends named Karen, uh, you're not alone because the name Karen peaked in 1965 with nearly 33,000 newborns named Karen, which is why we all have uh, friends, you know, at our age now named named Karen. But Ben, how on earth did, did somebody, whoever it was, choose Karen uh, to be the representative of everything bad? Well, I mean, at some point, you just hit a critical mass and you have to go with the flow and realize that name is done for now. I love that we know that there was 33,000 Karens at the peak in 1965, which makes them now at prime Karen age. We know that they are at the perfect <laughs> complaining to the manager golden age and society is in trouble. I'm I'm still stunned that there were still 325 babies named Karen this year. I mean, how annoying are those Karens going to be? Their parents are such bitter people. They named them, they named the baby Karen, knowing the stigma around the name Karen. They're going to grow up in mean, angry households, and this is a self-perpetuating cycle now. The Karens are going to be stronger. They're going to be harder to defeat. <laughs> and society is going to have to do our best to, to combat them. But I don't will know. Not I, I got to be honest. I think by the time they grow up, we're going to so have moved off Karen. And then the bad word's going to be Britney. Like if you do something in a Starbucks and you get caught on camera, you're the Britney, right? Oh, don't come at Britney. Leave Britney alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad it's not Judy. I mean, but uh, that name's never right? coming back. I guess that that name is never coming back. But I, you're right, Ashley. I have a friend named Karen, and she's like, I hate my name. I don't, I don't know what to do. I can't believe this. She's like completely freaking out over it. But here's what I, I want to know. It's so unfair. Yeah, it is. And why isn't there a guy version of Karen? You know, there's, I think there is. I would. There is, there is. Ken would or Kevin. It is. See, you don't I even know which one. Wait, 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 say, my, say it my, again, yes. Ben. 
Well, these things are a sign of the times. My guess is that one of the new, new, more popular, annoying names coming out now for men will be Q. A lot of kids call themselves Q, <laughs> and they have no ability to reason <laughs> or use common sense. It's a real problem. <laughs> but can you guys believe this? Um, one of my best friends, uh, her name is Karen, and her husband is Ken. So when they use no. the guy version, Ken, swear oh, to God, poor Karen terrible. and Ken are just like... And, and they're the coolest people ever. They would never complain about anything. And they're just like, seriously, is this really happening? To us? So awful. I've seen, it's so awful. I've seen what Kendall. About Cam? Before. Okay, so you've seen what? Well, I'm just saying, for your friend Karen's sake, I'm hoping that it's not the traditional Ken with no genitalia. I hope that they have a better health. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're okay in that department, but I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't asked. Okay, so I want to move on to, to um, they do, they do, but they have right. very, very unique uh, names. I don't think they're going to get caught up in all this. Okay. Um, okay, so there's another name, Kim, which is, you know, I think that would have been a kind of a, a 1960s uh, popular name, 70s too. But the Kim Kardashian popularity, I don't know if, if Kim Kardashian is going to like spawn a whole lot of other names, but it turns out she's now the seventh most followed person in the world on Instagram, falling behind such big names as Cristiano Ronaldo, Ariana Grande, and uh, her sister Kylie Jenner. She just celebrated hitting 225 million followers, and she did it with the following picture. Well, we're seeing video of her right now, but she posted a pic on her Instagram, um, and I think she was like pretty coy about it. She just put a caption, 225 mil, love you for life. So look at that picture. I mean, I guess it's not that different than a lot of her pictures, but that's how you celebrate 225 million, Ben. I have a lot of thoughts. First of all, I think my manliness just came back and I'm now outdoing both of you. So thank you for that. <laughs> you brought me right back. And secondly, I mean, the, the caption 225 mil, love you for life. It's poetry like that, that keeps the masses coming in droves to her page. Um, she has a way with words. This time she happened to include a bikini pic along with it, so I hope that doesn't scare off her poetry-loving flock. But, um, you know, they come for the poetry, they stay for the, for the bikini shots, the I buttocks. guess. They stay for yeah, the buttocks. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, what buttocks? I think she's smarter than the rest of us, uh, Judy. At 40 years old, I, oh. I, people say, what a, what a dummy. But I'm like, really? Because I think she's laughing all the way to all of her banks. Oh, I mean... For someone who has no marketable skills except marketing herself, I mean, come on. She's a genius. She is a genius. But I love that she complains about the butt picture and uses that butt picture to celebrate her 225 million followers. You know, she said, I wish people didn't, you know, look at my butt, but you're really doing nothing about stopping them from looking at your butt, you know? Now, right. if I did a picture like that, I would have minus 225 million <laughs> followers. <laughs> yeah, I kind of kept my bikini you. pictures off all social media <laughs> for fear that it would have people running for the hills. I don't know that you have that same problem, Ben. I don't. I People enjoy my bikini pics. I, I've done a Speedo <laughs> pic here and there. And Mankini? Well, yeah, the good thing about being a comedian is no matter how bad you look, people think it's hilarious. You get a lot of fire emojis, but a lot of ha-ha emojis as well. And right. it humbles you, but it keeps people coming back. I think Judy's totally right, though, that Kim is a complete genius. I mean, think of how her trajectory has grown. She went from sex tape fame to fame based on a reality show to all these brands to helping people around the world, to helping fight for criminal justice reform. She first got with Kanye West, we were all like, what is Kanye doing going with the reality star? And now she leaves him and we're all like, what was she doing with an idiot like right, Kanye right. West? Her stock is going right. up. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Okay. So uh, when we come back after the break, I'm going to ask you uh, a little bit about that Lady Gaga cameo on the Friends reunion. I don't know if you guys saw it. I was wrapped by the Friends reunion. And when I saw Lady Gaga show up, I actually thought um, that... Lisa Kudrow didn't recognize her. I want to get your take on the Friends oh, yeah. reunion and everything that happened after the break. Uh, back with Ben Glebe and Judy Gold, our fun, festive comedians. And I want to take us uh, right into the Friends reunion. Everybody was talking about it this week, especially Ben, right? 
then, <laughs> but the unforeseen uh -huh. highlight uh, might have been that cameo by Lady Gaga, who came into this whole fun production uh, to sing a duet with uh, character Phoebe, uh, Lisa Kudrow, uh, and they, of course, did the iconic song Smelly Cat. So let's play a quick clip. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Smelly cat, smelly cat, it's not your fault. Oh man, I mean that was just gold. And since it was gold, Judy, uh, let's go to you, uh, Judy Gold. Oh, Ashley. I, uh, could I, I thought... Maybe I was reading too much into it, but when I was watching it, I thought that Lisa Kudrow turned around and didn't recognize the character dressed like Phoebe, who performed that night. But it turns out this was all really planned. So um, I know. I, 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 right? I'm so glad weird? you said that. I'm so glad you said that because I was like, why is she not reacting at all? Like she, re it was like, oh, okay, okay. And I guess she was being yeah. Phoebe, but it was so. I, I would have been freaking it was weird. out. Me right. too. I'm like, I don't think she knows that's Lady Gaga. I know that's Lady Gaga, but I don't think right. she knows it's Lady Gaga. And now she's just trying to like play catch up on why do I recognize this woman? But, right. but it was that's planned. Exactly Apparently, like the director. Like. Yeah, so the director, Ben Winston, said he discussed four potential duet partners with Lisa Kudrow, and then apparently Lady Gaga was by far the the first choice. But is it possible, just possible, Ben, that maybe they put that story out afterwards? <laughs> I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist. It, look, it, it could be. I don't like to indulge in conspiracies when it comes to friends, but it's possible. <laughs> um, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Um, I didn't think I would have to get into this granular Hollywood detail with you two, but um, there's something called <laughs> acting, and so she probably was pretending with that reaction. And it's a, it's a tough thing. It's hard for people to realize that there's acting, but uh, it's a thing, and that's what we loved so much about friends. I will say this. I... Um, loved having Lady Gaga there. She was everybody's favorite part of Friends. And to see her back with the cat <laughs> was just amazing. Really loved I it. I really loved it. I, I have to say, I, I was not, uh, I didn't think it was going to be really that good, but I was curious to see what they all look like, and I did think it was fantastic. The way they produced it, all the rest, it was like A++. Okay, next story is about David Spade, a fellow comedian of yours. Uh, turns out he's going to Host The Bachelor, because according to the New York Post, which is, you know, it's a Bible, Chris Harrison will not be <laughs> returning to host uh, ABC's The Bachelor in Paradise. He went, you know, what they call the way of the dodo bird after defending a former Bachelorette contestant after it had come out that she'd gone to an old South Plantation themed party and was a whole cancel culture story, all the rest. But it's being reported that the show wants to experiment with a rotation of hosts and David Spade is in the rotation. So Judy, he's a super fan of The Bachelor. So there, that's helpful. And that's really he's helpful. a bachelor himself, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's a bachelor himself and a super fan. Is that a match made in heaven? I think so. I mean, look, comedians, great comedians speak truth to power. I think he's going to tell the truth. I think he's going to add in, in a really great like reality layer to this reality show. Uh, I think it'll be way more entertaining. He's going to call people out. Uh, I I love it. I love the idea of having a comedian there. Yeah. I mean, ben, look. Do I got, yeah. ben, I got 20 seconds. Just throw that in there, though, about comedians on The Bachelor. Is it a good mix? I think it's a great idea, although it does speak what even Judy just said to the state of our society right now. Speaking truth to power has become, to the government, no, to the producers and fans of The Bachelor Nation. <laughs> so I think it tells you where we are as a society. Love but you, ben. will. <laughs> Spade will call people out. I love Spade. So I think it's a pretty yeah. darn solid choice. Yeah. I know. I'm a big fan uh, of David Spade. I'm a big fan of both of you, too. So, Judy, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having both me. Yes. yes, I can say that when they come for comedians, we are all in trouble. And you can also catch Ben tomorrow night on his virtual improv show with uh, Greg Proops. The tickets at NowhereComedyClub.com. Thank you both. Happy Friday, thank you, everybody. Ashley.